Uh, Wing Wing. Okay, hello. Hello, Junior. Uh, who's speaking? Uh, this is Brian Dunn over at Hedgestone. Uh, you sent over a note look, saying that you were looking to potentially uh, sell XYZ trucking. Uh, yeah, I, I somebody had called me a few days back and uh, uh, I was thinking about it. I, I'm not, you know, I just, I don't know. I got, I'm so busy. I'm being pulled in a million different directions. What type of, uh, well, where are you located right now? Um, well, we're based out of Long Island. Uh, Kings Park. What type of of uh, trucking do you do? Is you is it is it are you asset based or do you lease your trucks? No, we we own trucks. We also have a brokerage. Um, so we kind of do both. Oh, very cool. How many trucks do you guys have? Trucks are killing me though. <laughs> uh, right now we have eight trucks. Um, you know, and and I've been trying to downsize. Do you have, uh, are your drivers W-2s? They are W-2, yes. And where, where, what is your typical run? What are your lanes? Um, t Typically New York to Florida. Is sometimes, it? Uh, sometimes, to, sometimes out to California. Dry goods or? Um, cars. Trucking cars? Yeah, we ship cars. We're, we're, we're a car hauler. Oh, very very cool. So th those are the they're uh, big rigs that you guys are running. Are you? Uh, is it typically? What do you what do you do on the back end of it? Are you are you dry, taking something back from Florida back to New York, or is it a one way trip? No, I, you know it's it, we try to get a backhaul as much as we can. Um, I'm not I'm not one for deadheading, so you know, we try to get a back hole, but it's just, you know, it's just, it's, you know, it's a crazy environment. There's, you know, I can't imagine anybody really wanting to buy the business is we're getting squeezed on, on all different ends. So, well, I, you know, I don't last, even know how realistic this is to be honest with you, Brian. The, the last, the last 12 months have been a, an absolute challenge for trucking. I mean, you know, you saw what happened with yellow uh, a couple months back. Uh, I mean, it's definitely, there's definitely been a squeeze over, uh, over the last 12 months. But we've also seen that there's been some bottoming since uh, like late June into July. And from uh, one of other, other trucking companies I'm working with have had a pretty decent August. So it does look like we've seen a bit of a turn on it. Have you guys seen the same thing? Yeah, we always, I mean, it's cyclical. You know, this time of year is usually a slow period. So I can't say, you know, I can't really say the same. But, you know, the spring, you know, we had we had a few good months. We didn't break any records, but, um, you know, the demand is still there. It's just we're getting squeezed. Margins are getting squeezed. We're get, you know, our, our expenses go up. Insurance is just insane. Operating a business here in New York is is not the same as it was 20 years ago. So um, that's the only reason why I entertained your guys call the other day. But like I said, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm at this point, you know, I'm downsizing the trucks. And for me, you know, I'm not sure you know, what I'm going to be able to get for this business. But for me, I'd rather just get rid of my trucks, keep my brokerage, and I can, you know, potentially keep my cash flow if, what? you know, worse comes to worse. Tell, tell me about, tell me about the brokerage. Well, we, you know, we have outside relationships with other trucking companies like ours that we've developed over the years. So, uh, you know, when we're overwhelmed or when we can't do a load, you know, we're able to broker things um, to people that we know in the business. Um, so, uh, you know, as time has gone on, we've downsized trucks and we've focused more on building those relationships so that um, we have a little bit more flexibility. What is what's the uh, the revenue on the broker side for uh, for 23 and for 22? Uh, so revenue is about one point five on the broker side. And what do you, what do you what are you netting on the uh, broker side? Are you renting out trailers as well, or are you just uh, filling the loads? No, we we can't. It's a good question. Or maybe that's possible in other logistics, but in in car hauling, the trailer is attached to the cab, so you can't you can't really do that. So we we're just brokering loads. Um, it has nothing to do with our equipment. And net, I mean, you know, I'm. You know, five five or ten percent 
you know, is, is probably net um, on the brokerage side and uh, on the trucking side, it's there's red months. There's, you know, months that we have a, you know, I'm lucky if I can average 5% a year on the, on the trucking side, I'm lucky. What was your top line on the trucking? Trucking was um, 4 million. Yeah, that, that, I mean, you're having the problem that, that 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 lots of other entities are having right now. I mean, you're 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 large enough that you're squeaking by, but at the same time, you have tons and tons of expenses, and with with fuel and insurance squeezing you, you're gonna have some red months and some uh, some you know slight green months uh, and and alternating in between. Right. Uh, you definitely fit in better as a, a tuck in. Uh, for somebody else who already has the the infrastructure and can layer you guys into it. So uh, although you guys aren't making uh, a ton, adding four million dollars in revenue to somebody who already has the infrastructure, instead of having a bottom line of you know a you know a couple hundred thousand dollars, you could potentially add that four million dollars in an incremental revenue could to them could potentially add six hundred to eight hundred thousand dollars in bottom line since their their fixed costs are already existing and we just would just be tucking you in so i mean th right, there's right. Definitely value to uh to what you have uh as it is and more about probably more value to a strategic if you you're right if you're going to go out there and try to sell yourselves to a you know joe blow independent and who's going to run the same operation the value is going to be the asset of the trucks I mean, th there's not going to be a, a a ton more but if we if we pitch you to a strategic, then there might be some uh, some room, so it'd be a win win on both sides. I mean, it sounds like a good idea. I, you, you're talking over my head. No idea what you mean by strategic tuck ins. Like I don't know any of this stuff, man. I've been I'm a truck driver, so I I don't know, you know, what kind of experience you have with with with. It sounds like you've maybe dealt with some people, but you know, I if you can send me some information, you know, I'll think about it. Sure, and, and, and honestly. All, all I meant by a strategic is a a larger trucking company. Right. Um, so by 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 and a tuck in, meaning that that uh, they already have the since they're, they're a larger trucking company already, uh, all the all the admin, all the dispatch, uh, they're going to get be better insurance rates. They're going to have better fuel charges, uh, fuel rates, so that when we if they're if they're currently running a hundred trucks, and we add in uh, another eight to them, they already their infrastructure is already existing for the hundred, and they're going to have cost savings that will then be applied to uh, your trucks that are added in, which is yeah, why yeah. To, their eight trucks to them is more valuable. Totally makes sense. Um, totally makes sense. I guess you know the other the other part of it is you know what happens to my employees. You know I, I I've not I've never worked for anybody in my life. You know, my whole life I've been self-employed. So I, I've thought about potentially, you know, what am I supposed to do? Am I going to, am I going to now have to work for a guy if, you know, if I sell the business? So these, there's a lot of moving parts, I guess. And, and, you know, it's probably not, not, not a good idea to go through everything here on this phone call. I got my phone's ringing off the hook. That's right. Let, 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 send me, let me get some, some financials from you. Let me analyze them. Let me put them in in and how they would potentially look inside of an like we mentioned inside a larger entity, and come back to you with, with a evaluation that could potentially make sense. Okay. No. Sounds good. Thanks. No, like the, the being more being more conversational there. There was no you know you don't need to have close on the first call, but that was much better being just conversational with Junior. So Junior, cool. thanks. Yep. Yeah, good job, Brian. Especially um, showing that you know the industry, that you have knowledge in it, which I didn't know that could potentially a four million dollar revenue company in trucking <laughs> could be on the red. That's crazy. Five percent margins. That's that's really tight for trucking. It's, it's not yeah, that those tight numbers. Environment. Those numbers were actually like pretty close to what my family's business does. It's it's the the business is just crazy. And, and honestly, the, the last 10, 12 months in trucking has been a, a real a real challenge, especially for the small guys. Uh, and you're seeing it on the, on the, on the big, any, any of the bigger guys that are leveraged are getting crushed as well. 
And that's why you had so yellow do uh, uh, have their bankruptcy six weeks ago, eight weeks ago, whatever it was. But on on the smaller guys, uh, with increased fuel costs, uh, increased insurance costs, and decreased per mile costs, uh, per mile what they're what they can charge for it. Right now, a four million dollar trucking company breaking even is not going to be is not going to be unusual. You know, when you when you have a small entity, you, you still have the you still have the, all your fixed costs there. Now, if that four million dollar uh, trucking company was able to achieve eight million dollars in revenue. All of a sudden, that incremental four million is going to really drop down to the bottom line, where they might be breaking even on the first four million, but now that they're doing eight million in revenue, that they could be having a half million dollar profit on there because the fixed costs are already covered. So, I mean, when when they're in when you're in that size, you're sort of in a no man's land um, in in terms of really making profitability. So, no, Junior, thank you, I appreciate it. Yeah, that was fun. Nice. I appreciate I appreciate the uh you know going back and forth. I'm I'm looking forward to, to getting going myself. But there was there was no need to ask for, you know, there, there was nothing to ask for an agreement yet. I could I could have probably pushed a little harder on there, but i if I got the PLs from him on that second call, we'd go through and try to work towards an agreement. And obviously with being conversational, it's more it becomes more of a it sounds cheesy, but more of a, a teamwork uh, approach to it, and you know, understanding what's going through, and just discussing the industry. And and again, you're not most of the time you're not going to close close a listing on call one. It's going to be call two, three, or four 